everyone? How are you today? So today's going to be a little bit different. So the thing is, today the goal is to show you practical attacks you guys can do at home. So basically, I am a team lead. I'm a pen tester. So basically, I get paid to break into buildings, steal stuff. And I have an amazing theme of people who are super smart. But sometimes I feel they try super hard to do things that, to be honest, anybody can do. So the goal is by the end of this talk today, I got like 20 tricks in 20 minutes. All of you should be able to do all those attacks I'm showing you today. All right? The, the difficult part is trying the clicker. Oh, it works. All right. So my name is Larenzoni. As I said, I have, uh, I'm doing lots of things. I'm a magician, pickpocketer, lockpicker. Um, I got lots of hobbies, and it really helped my testing. So in pen testing, we got a motto. It is, if it's stupid and it works, then it's not stupid. So basically, we're goal-driven. If it works, then no matter how hard it looks or how stupid it looks, if it works, it works. So today, oh, there's a, oh, no problem. There's a tiny problem. We're going to talk about three things. Physical access security, logical access security, and social engineering. And all those things will be stupid tricks all of you can try. Now, some of you are asking, why am I focusing first on physical security? Well, most people are like, most companies are like an M&M candy, the, a, a hard shell and a, and a soft interior. So once we're able to breach the perimeter, we're in. So being able to get into systems like physical systems is a pretty good start when we're doing testings. So first, let's focus about secu physical security. So in movies, you've all seen this scene. Somebody gets a, gets a hold of a key, then make, want to make a copy of a key. They have like alginate or some form of very difficult mold. They make a copy, then they like have lead, or some people will uh, make an imprint on their forearm, or will, some people will work really hard to take pictures of the key. What's the problem with this approach? Well, if you think about it, you're holding the key in your hand. So how come, like, how about you take the key, put it in your pocket, and take some other key, like similar key, and put it back, and bring back the keys? And like, when we're looking at people who've seen movies or pen testers, when we tell them just steal the keys, like, it sounds such a novel idea, but when you think about it, when you, give, when you hand back keys, nobody tries the keys you've just given them. Like, if somebody lends me their keys, I switch the, the car key, I put some other random car key, bring it back. Nobody's going to say, hmm, I should try it back. So it works really well. Like, the moment you can get your hands on keys, why doing all those fancy card copying things when you can just steal them? So basically, I always have, like, lots of keys. Which, like, we all have keys that basically we don't exactly know why they're for in our keyring. You know, like, they're the kind of key we had for something, but we're not too sure. Those ones we can switch. So basically, if you can, that's an easy way to steal keys. Oh, now I got something. Access cards. You know what the, the access cards? So if we're able to get access cards, of course, we can get into most organizations. And that's fairly practical. Well, today I'm going to show you the universal access cards. So I'm not sure if you can hear. Hear? Yeah. So do you know what it is? This is like a brand new attack. It's a universal access card. Basically, it's a speaker. So basically, all it is, it's a little speaker. And that's like this here. It costs like three bucks in Alibaba. Uh, basically, we have all the sounds of pretty much all the, all the badge con connectors. Like, I have all of them. And when you keep in mind, when you piggyback, so when you badge a card, the light is either red or green. And then it makes a sound, it beeps. The reason why it beeps is because if I'm following someone, the person cannot see whether the line is red or green. What they're waiting for is for the beep. So if I have a way to create that beep, then I can piggyback no problem. Congrats, cost you two bucks. All right? Cloning cards. One of the things you should know is hackers take selfies as well. Um, on access cards, if you look at them, there's a number. 
And if you have that number, basically you can clone the card. So like people talk about expensive equipment such as Proxmarks and embedding things in the door so that as you walk, you'll clone the cards. And sure, those things work well. But how about, do I know you? Oh, sure. mind if we take a selfie? It's, it'd be very nice. Thank you for your time. I'm super happy of meeting you. And this way, you can clone a card as well. Doesn't take any fancy equipment, doesn't take anything. Just having a plain, simple phone, and you can take a selfie. I know that some people like invest in a very large uh, camera and will snap pictures of cards across, across the street. It works, but basically a selfie works just as well. And it's not as inconvenient as a Proxmark. So what a Proxmark is, is what, a tool we use to clone access cards. But it's difficult because sometimes we need like to go very near the cars, the cards. So as people have like cards near their thigh, if I go near their thigh to to scan something, it might be a little bit awkward, right? So we were in this engagement at a very high security facility, and we had this very problem. We had like people we need to clone their card, but there was no way we could hover near their thighs just to clone their card. So how can you solve this problem? Well, you buy a hazmat suit. So if you have a ha that's mean the hazmat suit. If you have a hazmat suit, suddenly people kind of expect you to have a little tool with blinky things and to scan you because obviously like it's a ha nobody wears a hazmat suit for fun, right? So clearly there's a reason. So you can scan people, no problems. But there's a problem with this. If you see someone with a hazmat suit, of course you're gonna talk about it. You don't see it every day. But I had to be there for like three hours, so we needed to disarm the fact that, that we just had a hazmat suit to use authority and shock. So how did we do it? There was a friend of mine who had a, um, uh, a letter saying, please wash your hands. This was a stunt for, uh, the flu and make sure like you have your vaccine and make sure you're safe. So if you look at the attention level of people, they were, oh, wow, there's a hazmat, there's a problem, I'm going to be scanned. But then we disarm all their, their worries about, oh, it's just a lame campaign about the flu. So suddenly, it's not surprising anymore. So they don't talk about it, like, really, because when you think about it, you don't talk, like, all of you experience hundreds of different things today. But I'm not sure you recall all the person you met. I'm not sure you recall all the doors you've opened. Like, we do so many bland things that we just forget about. So, but we, I, had, I needed the oomph of being in a hazmat suit to be able to scan the people. But then I needed to disarm it so I could stay for very long. So that's why that's something that works really well. All right, perhaps this one you may not be able to try at home unless you got a hazmat suit. But at least you know the, the thinking process. Oh, pins. So when you're attacking physical systems, you have some systems that are dual control. You need a card that you've cloned previously and a pin. Now, how do you attack pins? So if you look at James Bond, they have like those uh, UV powder that costs quite a lot and they put it in and then they have cameras and they work super hard. And sure, it's a very valid system, but you know, Tide, like tide to go works just as well. Tide is UV fluorescent, and if you're cut at the customs with tide to go nobody minds anything. Whereas if you have like weird spy, spy powders, they might worry. So like tide to go will glow under UV, so you put a little tiny dot on the, nine, on the 10 uh, keys of the pad, and then when somebody gets in, you take your phone and you, bam, you know, well, the four numbers of the pin, if there were four. So, yeah. But that's a very simple trick. And it doesn't cost, well, it costs like one tight to go tube. So it's not so super expensive. It's something you can all do at home. Alarm systems. So now, by now, you've cloned the card, got a pin, got, into the, got in, but now you have alarm systems. And alarm systems are a problem as well because, you know, they're monitored. Once again, in the movies, they do lots of things. They, like, bypass the laser with the uh, smoke. Or the, it's all things. But 
some tricks are very simple and work in real life. The trick I, I favor the most is the tricks used by Antwerp diamond thieves. So it actually worked uh, five years ago, six years ago. So basically what they did is why when we're attacking an armed systems, are we focusing at attacking it while it's armed? Because if I mess up and it's armed, I'm in, a tr I'm in big trouble. But most of them systems are off half the day when there's people that can get in, right? Like in most offices, in the day there's no alarms because, well, it would trigger every time as people walk, walk by. But of course, after 6 or 7 p.m., the alarms might be on because, you know, if there's somebody you want to know. Well, but then, so how about you sabotage it? How about instead, when it's off, sabotage it? So the Antwerp thieves, what they did is they purchased PAM, you know, like spray on grease. And while the system was closed, they sprayed PAM on the movement detectors. So even though they're super high, since the spray is pretty useful and you can do it, and by the moment, the systems are on, the system is completely blind. And how many people have, to be honest, how many of you have a procedure that you need to clean and wipe the movement detectors every day? Nobody does this. Like, if you spray this in a bank, nobody will, know, will be none the wiser. And it costs like $2, and nobody minds. Like, it's things you can do at home. Pretty simple. Um, if that doesn't work, like say you don't have PAM on you, well, there are things you can do. Oh, oops, wrong button. That's the difficult part. Good at compute. So you can just put a thing in front of it. So uh, now offices have like large plants that you can move. Um, there are lots of ways you can just bypass and learn system if you look at it. Just by putting things in front of it or you can reduce the effectiveness. Some people like... Uh, have drapes that you can move or a cardboard. There's lots of ways to do it. And it's simple and you don't need to be James Bond or to be trained into alarm systems, bypass ninja things and bypass the, alarm, the, the lasers. Like that's not how we do it. Physical intrusions. So now you're in, congrats. You've bypassed the alarm systems. You, buy, you clone the key, you got the pin, you're in. But now you're in an open desk office like this and everybody looks at you. Of course it's kind of worrying, like you get a little bit paranoid because everybody's looking at you, you don't belong there, what do you do? Well, the good thing is you've thought ahead and you printed this lovely little paper here saying, this room is reserved for the secret project Orion. Sorry, the room's canceled, have a nice day. And that kind of thing is like the boring thing that's always happened, right? Like when you reserve a room, there's all, sometimes it's double booked and we don't really know why. And, you know, it's just, just it's bad. Let's find another room. That the things, those things happen all the time and nobody minds really. It's just inconvenient. So how about we take this things we're trained that meeting rooms sometimes are double booked and it's a problem and leverage this to find our very own office. So in this engagement, we, we uh, taped this on the door of a meeting room and we stayed there five days. So on the fi first day, people were like, oh, that's weird. But after the, f after the second day, oh yeah, it's just an accountant for Orion, no problem. And like by the fifth day, we didn't need to badge or anything. We're, oh, hi, yeah, sure, you're the new, new thing for the project. And it, it worked. There is no logo or anything. There is no false document. It's like, it took me, I think the longest part was like print, walking to the printer to fetch a paper. Like it's the difficult part is having the paper. So it's not something difficult, it's something we all can do. But the thing is, nobody has reason to doubt that it's not valid. Like it's not surprising, it's not out of the ordinary. It's like, yes, office rooms sometimes are double booked. So that was a little part for physical attacks, but as you agree, it's fairly straightforward. Now, logical attacks are, you would think, be more complicated, because after all, it's computers and systems and so on. So I'm going to discuss first Wi-Fi. So basically, 
When you have a Wi-Fi system, you have what is called a WIPS. WIPS is Wireless Intrusion Prevention System, and basically it tells you you cannot have the same name, the same Wi-Fi name as the one I'm, I'm protecting against. So basically, if there's a Wi-Fi serene risk, myself, I cannot have a Wi-Fi that's called serene risk, otherwise, and I have people connect to me, that would not work. There, there would be alarms that are raised, and we don't want to raise alarms. So what we do is we make something like this. So this is in CGI red, I got it in Telus blue and in and Telus green and in Bell blue. It's the same template, five bucks on Fiverr. Um, basically it's just a little thing I printed like on every single elevator at this engagement. Like I, go, I got up at five, but all those printer, uh, all those prints, posters everywhere. And basically all it says is, hey, there's a new wireless system here. Please connect to it You're using your username and password. So the WIPs, of course, they didn't know anything because it's a new system. Like it's not what it's looking for. And you know, people get in all the time. Like that's something that would happen and it looks kind of good enough. So it really, really works well. The funny part is, um, it was on a, at a building where we could not get in. So we taped it on the outside doors, the glass doors of this building. And it was good enough and it worked. It worked like for seven hours, so we got lots of credentials. And at some point, somebody figured it was a problem and removed them, but didn't tell anyone, so we got lots of credentials with this. So Wi-Fi, like the technology is very solid, but as long as you keep having this, it's not a problem. NAC bypass. So a NAC is a network access control. Basically what it is, is it's a system that prevents you from plugging your laptop into the network without being authorized. It's something that some very large business have in place, what the most high maturity companies have it in place. But there's a problem. If you see on the screenshot, there's something really weird. My computer name is Xerox Printer 317. Why would I name myself as a printer? Well, the thing is, printers are not NAC friendly. Like, uh, sysadmins quite often have problems with printers not be able to access the network. So it's very, it's very, very common for sysadmins to have alerts and say, oh, it's just a printer, I'll accept it. So what's interesting with this is if you can't attack the, the technology, attack the process. So in this case, basically, you name yourself, you, you call yourself, I'm a printer. The, you don't access the network. There's an alarm saying, oh, somebody plugged to this network, there's a problem. Oh, it's a printer, fine, I'm gonna prove it. So it's not something the technology is broken, it's just that since printers aren't good enough, then people will just whitelist them. So that's why I think the mindset of attacking the process if we can't attack the technology is something when we're doing testing and when, when we're assessing the security of systems, we should really, really look into. Because even if we have like very hard technologies, if the process of using it is wrong, there are still gaps we can attack. I'm going a little bit fast because I have plenty of tricks. Social engineering. All right. So in engagement, sometimes we're asked to do phishing. Basically, phishing is we send an email, we say we're somebody, and, su and such and such. But what's infuriating is when the client cheats. What that means is we're asked to do a phishing test, and the day before, they send an email saying, warning, there's gonna be a phishing test. Please do not click on any links. There's gonna be a phishing test. Please be careful, do not do anything. For me, that's like cheating the stats. Basically, you're ensuring that the campaign you want will not be working. And basically, we look bad, they look bad, everybody looks bad. How can you circumvent this? We sent this phishing. This phishing is like, you'll win $10,000 million. Hello, friend, I am the Prince of Mugabe. I selected you to win $10,000 billion. Click here. How many people do you think clicked on that link? Like five. Out of a thousand, it's very small. But there's two things you should know. The icon you're missing, like, I'm not sure, if, is there a laser printer here? Yeah, the, laser, the, the icon you're missing here is super important. That steals password. It performs what is called the SMB relay attack. I, the only thing you need to know is, 
somebody opens this, we can get their Windows password. Now, users are trained to forward phishing to who? To help desk. With them, we have, they have credentials that we want. So it kind of worked, but like five out of a thousand, it's interesting. Here's the fun part. Then we sent that email. That email is, email is much better, there's a logo at the top and so on, and at company, we take security very seriously. As such, you may have received a phishing email. Thank you for people who followed the process. Here's a list of people who, did, who clicked on the phishing, and if there are any errors, please tell us before that date. The if there are any errors suggests there might be, so everybody's gonna check. And I also hint, I think, that there might be uh, penalties for people who clicked on the phishing. So, yeah, 95% success rate with that one. <laughs> so, because people are curious and, you know, and hinting, hinting that there's a pro there's a, there might be a problem made the whole difference. I am not saying there's a problem because, once again, my goal is to be boring. I don't want you to, to recall you did this. When we did the after interview, it was like, oh yeah, we checked, I was in the list, nothing. Like when we do phishing, our goal is to be things that are bland, like the um, code of conduct. Everybody has to sign a co code of conduct yearly and it's boring and it's mundane and we do it and it's done and that's it, right? So why it, it, people who are doing phishing with, there's a problem, you're gonna be sick, you're gonna be hacked, all those things, they get our security brain wired up, there's a problem. And suddenly we're trying to be, de like we're, we're, our brain is working because there's a problem. My goal is for you to be sleepy. My goal is for you to be mundane, below the radar. So that's the things we do for phishing that works really well. Um, credibility, so one thing is when we're doing a physical pen test, we're wearing a suit. But not all business now require a suit. Like the, you know, the, the development companies that everybody wears polo or shirts, then how can you fit in? Well, we all have hobbies. I collect lanyards. So basically when you have the right lanyard, nobody cares about what your card looks like. You have a lanyard, you put it, you put it in your pocket and everybody knows you belong. Lanyards are like super cheap on TGG. You can buy like them in bulk or make them yourselves. And even if you've got like big four lanyards, oh, you're the auditor, fine. Of course, you don't need to have your lanyard and shoot around. Just have it around your neck and don't mention it. People will figure it out by themselves. And that's interesting because basically when you're caught is because you didn't answer their question. Like the, the way the mind works is, Something is, is a, there's a problem. Oh no, it's fine. And then the attention level lowers. If you're not able to disarm their thought, then they're gonna act on something. But if you're able to disarm it ahead with, oh sure, they're the editor, they have the lanyard, then you won't have any problems. Um, by the same token, sometimes, you know, there was one time where I had, uh, I did, did not belong. I did not have my the right access card. And I felt the person was really worried about should I, should I challenge this person or not? So the, the person believed I was, not, um, I was not in place. So what I did is I immediately challenged them. I was like, hey, do you have your card? Of course the person was, uh, what's wrong? And by challenging them ahead, I of course was able to bypass, bypass their, the problem. Now one more thing, and that's I have like one more minute, and it's super important. I am handing out keys right now. So in movies, we all found the same thing, the USB key technique. Basically, people are dropping USB keys and people are plugging it, plugging, plugging it. But that doesn't work anymore. Like it's been Mr. Robot in, the, in many movies and many things, and it doesn't work anymore. Since it doesn't work, how can we bypass this? when there's this psychologist called Milgram who figured the solution. Instead of having USB keys, have keys, like car keys. 
put the car keys next to a USB key. If you could, like, for even better, have like a key, key ring with a baby's picture on it that works even better. And suddenly people will want to see who, like, it's not a malicious key, it's somebody lost their keys, I'm going to help them. So something that's really useful, you can buy keys in bulk. And if you wanted to target that you make sure that the IT people get it so you get their credentials, then of course you can have RSA tokens like this, because that's mostly the RSA people who have them. So I'm handing around RSA tokens for you to try this at home. So, because like no, no, not many people have them, so thank you so much. So thank you for your time. I am out of time, but I hope that was uh, very useful for all of you, and have a nice day.